do we think we need to have more details in place in the workplace as to whether the job that you're applying for would be appropriate if you have epilepsy? Yeah. Or is it to maybe have more conversations with the work mates that you're going to be working with? At what level does the discussion need to be had? I, I personally think it should go as far back as introducing an education to young children yeah. mm -hmm. about this. Because mm -hmm. I don't remember learning about epilepsy in school. No. no. I don't remember no. anything I learned in school, um, really. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't remember <laughs> hearing about that in, you know, in science, biology, or whatever like that. I just, I don't. I mean, I've never heard of no. anything to do with epilepsy before on the day. I don't no. think I remember about it. I think a module on illnesses would illnesses, be very beneficial. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember yeah. anything about other illnesses. Yeah. No. No. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Everything, I think, yeah. would you know, be very... You start a new job and you have to take, like, courses, health and safety courses and stuff like that. Like, yeah. maybe it would help if there is a section on epilepsy yeah. because, you know, it's much more common than a yeah. lot of people yeah. think. And it's, it's as easy as that, really. Yeah. No, it's really important because one thing I found with my friends or when I was like, having a part-time job or just with any teacher, you tell them, oh, I have epilepsy, by the way, and I might feel like this and I might get a bit dizzy. But that doesn't mean I'm going to have a seizure. They just think you're literally just going to drop or just blank out or just go into your own little world any minute. And it's like, I'm telling you I'm fine, but just, just for the future, just in case, like, this is how I feel when I just want everyone to know because I think it's really important that you do know so that I'm not by myself and then you'll be so confused in any, if anything happens. With my case, I used to um, get seizures while I was sleeping, and it was normally because if I was very tired. So I knew when I had a seizure because I'd wake up and I felt like I'd run a marathon. And all I'd want to do after that was just sleep. So it's, it's come along now where if I go to a new club, I would um, discuss, openly discuss uh, my epilepsy and try and get as much information to the, the players around me because we have a lot of uh, way travelling and you share rooms with, with, with people so they need to know what they can do really if I have a seizure while they're there so um, I just try, try and give them a little bit of information if, if I do happen to have a, a seizure in front of them. If you go through an interview with ten script supervisors, you interview each one, and then it would be lingering in the back of the mind that she has epilepsy, and I have had a seizure on set before, and it delays everything, and it is inconvenient <laughs> for everyone. And so going for an interview and someone has brings up something, if I brought it up in an interview, they'd feel that it's more serious than it actually is. They'd be like, no, it's very well. If there's producers there, they're like, no, no, just move on to the next, because they take every single detail from the interview. And, um, and they want the best person possible, so I just do not bring it up in interviews. Mm. Well, then like, that's 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 the stigma mm. about epilepsy, and that actually makes me really mad because yeah. you should be able to be yeah. honest yeah. and open. But I can compl mm. I completely understand why you wouldn't want to make a fuss about it because yeah. you know the in, in the film industry it's very similar to the music industry, which I'm in. One time thing that they think that they could maybe get someone else for it, mm. so they can get someone else mm. for it. Yeah. You know, you're, you're very easily replaceable in this yeah. industry, mm. and that makes me mad that you feel like you can't be open about that. I mean, I don't, I don't have epilepsy myself. My mum was diagnosed about three years ago. Even before that, I had no idea about epilepsy. I mean, you just you kind of associate it with what you see in films, people on the floor having a fit. And that's epilepsy. So yeah. to find yeah. out that yeah. there's yeah. over 40 types of epilepsy, yeah. you're like, what? Mm. Like, what is the second one? Like, mm. you don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a second one, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Exactly. 40. Yeah. So I think it completely opened up this, this world. She, she stopped working because she just didn't want to have seizures at work because, one, it's embarrassing. As you know, what happens when you do seizure, there are a couple of you know, unpleasant things that happen and she was more bothered about being embarrassed about that rather than her own <coughs> safety. So she stopped working and she's not worked since. Um, she has been a year seizure free now, which is amazing. Yeah. 
um, but she still she still does suffer with the depression and the anxiety because the medication that she's controlled in it's like a catch twenty two situation. So you won't have the seizures, but you're gonna suffer with depression. Yeah. As long as you're on this medication. Yeah. yeah. So which one do you want? It's yeah. like she's not really got the <laughs> right option. Let's, if we can, be honest here about whether we also have negative perceptions about epilepsy that have changed with the passage of time. I know that I certainly did. And it's only through being so close to my brother that actually some of my prejudices dropped away. Does that sound familiar? When we first found Daniel, we didn't know what a seizure was. We thought he was dying. Mm -hmm. it, it was alien to us. Mm -hmm. It was really traumatic. And, um, and, then, and then you slowly begin the process of diagnosis and understanding what it is. But we were really lucky. He always had a headache before a fit. Mm -hmm. So he always oh, had he warning very so lucky. Very, very lucky. <laughs> yeah. So he didn't have to have a headgear or anything like that. He he was really blessed, you know, if he can be what well, and he never it never defined him. You know, he's he's starting his own property development and business now and he's got a very successful career and and it hasn't held him back one bit. Well I don't have a life at all, no. I have a, a whole host of problems. <laughs> so I have um I have Tourette's. I have narcolepsy uh, as well as epilepsy. Um, so, um, like I said before, all I do at the moment is ride because that's the only thing I can do. Um, and it's just, I get so tired on all the medication I'm taking. Um, it just depends on my life. I can't, um, can't walk a few steps really without falling, without having a seizure. I have several seizures a day. So I can't go out anywhere without the wheelchair, so I have to have somebody with me at all times. And um, my dad's had to come today as a carer. It's completely affecting my life. Epilepsy is sort of uh, that huge barrier where I can't fit in with other people at my school and I can't discuss things they want to discuss because there's nothing to relate. So. Yeah, that's a lot of thing. That's the main thing I've struggled with uh, over the past few years, getting to have a proper conversation with people in my school. So that's one of the main things I get myself down about. But to be honest, like I was saying to you, I just usually every single day I wake up, I blank the fact that all of my epilepsy does bring like me to a point where I'm so tired, I just don't feel like doing anything. But I wake up, I become my normal self, I'm happy, I get on with the day, I spend the day with my family, so yes, yeah, so I just try to be the best I can. Yeah.